Previously in the series of microservices architecture pattern videos, we saw how to create a saga kind of a pattern. We also saw the hands-on architecture using that. In this video, we are going to look at something called transactional outbox pattern using which you can fix some of the problems which we had with sagas. The agenda goes like this. Initially, we are going to look at the transactional outbox pattern, what the pattern in itself is, when to use this kind of a pattern. We are going to study this pattern using a notification as a service. So I'm going to show you how you can create a notification as a service system using this particular pattern. And finally, we are going to see the challenges and limitations which are present in this particular pattern. So what is transactional outbox pattern? In case of sagas, we had a problem where we had to reliably update the database and also send events in a single go. Now, how do we handle that within sagas? That's where the transactional outbox pattern comes into picture. Let me explain that with a simple microservice example. So let's imagine that I have an order app. I'm just calling this as app, but imagine this is an order service. We are getting a REST API call saying, create this new particular order with these product information. Now this application has to create a new order, persist into the database, and also it needs to send these order created events so that other microservices or other subscribers who are listening to these microservices can do their job. That's what we saw in the Saga pattern and we're going to look at the same here. So we have a database which does the persistence. So I have an order table. So once we hit the persist method, it goes and adds the order into the order table. Now once the order table commits the transaction, the request now moves to the publishing part. Now publish will obviously push the message or the event into the queue where different subscribers can listen to this queue and then consume them. This is a single part which we saw in the saga where here I'm just depicting one particular microservice. Now let's think about a failure scenario. Now what happens when there is a disconnect between the database and the application? So if you're not able to persist the new order, obviously the whole order service becomes unreliable and it is unusable as well. This is the classic case where the database goes down and then you will have to think of using a different database, which is okay in terms of transactionality, I don't have anything left in the system so I am either 0 or 1. So I either create the order or I don't create the order so which is okay. Now coming to the publishing bit. Now what happens if the queue connection is disconnected right. Let's imagine that my order got created. I have an order ID let's say 001. Now once the order got created we need to publish that particular order ID into the queue so that people can go and look up that order and then do something else. Now what happens if the queue is down? Should my post order rest endpoint get a success message or a failure message or maybe something intermediate? In this particular case, it's slightly complicated because we have to handle transactionality between two different systems. One a database here, the other is a queuing system. This is where transactional outbox pattern comes into picture. Let me redesign this particular use case and see how we can leverage transactional outbox pattern in this particular architecture. I'm going to take the same application and the database. So I have a post uh, endpoint which is going to create orders. I have a persist method. I have an order table so I can directly create that. This is the same BAU stuff which we did in the previous use case as well. But in addition to this, we need to publish this particular message into the queue, right? In order to do two different operations, one possible option is using a two-phase commit, but I don't have an option to use a two-phase commit because I don't want to make my post rest endpoint complicated. So in this case, what I will do is I'll create a persist outbox flow where it persists my messages into the outbox table. For example, I can just mark my order ID and then I can say message needs to be published. If you look at it, the post endpoint will fail if there is a database connection. It will definitely fail it because the first message also would have failed. Now there is no integration for the persist outbox to any other different system, right? So the post is going to be quick enough. It's going to create a new order and it's going to add one more record in another table where we are just going to add an order ID and the status of the message which needs to be published. So the job of the order service is done here. In order to publish this particular message from the outbox, we need to have a publisher. So I'm going to create a relay publisher which can read the message from the outbox table and it can publish that into the queue. Now if you look at this, we are adding one more microservice. However, we are fixing the problem of having an unreliable queue or an unreliable third party system to which we are going to push the message. So this creates a reliable order service 
So whenever I create an order, I'm going to persist only into the database and there is going to be another microservice which is going to read from this particular database and then publish these messages. Now, of course, there are different patterns for these publishes. For example, I can look at transactional logs in the database to even look at the new record addition and stuff like that. Or I can also use polling publisher kind of a pattern where I can keep on polling every one minute or whatever time frame we set. These are different ways in which you can look up a table and then see what new records were added. And then those messages can be published and you can go back to the database and then say processed. So that way you don't have to replay the message again. So the relay publisher's job is to just read the message from the database, publish that and then mark that particular message as published. Most of us have worked in these kind of patterns, just that we don't know that the pattern's name is called transactional outbox pattern. You may think this is slightly complicated than just persisting and publishing a message, but it helps us to scale our system independently and provide a much reliable order service for our consumers. Now that we know what is transactional outbox pattern, now when should I use this kind of a pattern in production? Use this kind of a pattern when two-phase commit is not an option. Two-phase commits are a pattern where you can persist or mark transactionality between two different phases where if the second phase fails you have to roll back the first phase as well right when you don't have an option to have two phase commits in our case we didn't have database as the second system so we had the queuing system which is completely different and it follows a different state mechanism so two phase is not an option for us hence we chose transactional outbox pattern the other option is when you have more than one source to persist the data for example, here in our case, we persisted the data into a database and also we pushed that message into a queuing system. Similarly, if you want to publish it into multiple mediums, then you can do that as well. Also, let's say you have a use case where you want to publish the messages only when you commit that to a database. In our case, we wanted to create a new order and once the order got created, then we had to publish the message. So we should use transactional outbox in that case. Finally. Let's say I want to publish change data capture messages where I want to publish my consumers, where I want to notify my consumers about things which got changed in my system, then I can use transactional outbox pattern. Let's understand this with a real life use case. Imagine you have a notification as a service platform where you are going to subscribe and then you are going to notify users based on this particular platform. I'm going to take the notification service, which is the app. We have a database and also I have a subscription service. So users can directly use the subscription service to subscribe to some notifications. For example, I'm a consumer. So I want to subscribe to, let's say, an order service. So I will call the subscription service and I will subscribe to them. And I'll also tell what kind of medium I want to subscribe to. It could be email, it could be SMS or maybe a queue. I provide that during my subscription and that gets added into a subscription table. On the other hand, we have the notification service where I have a notify endpoint where people can call this particular endpoint and add a new notification to the system. So whenever somebody calls the notify endpoint, it adds an entry into the notification table and also it will persist a duplication or a mapping into the notify outbox table. So this notify outbox table is where we are going to pick the message from and then notify our subscribers. Now if you see here, the concept of a notification as a service system is you need to notify your subscribers based on the subscription and also the type of message. So here I am a producer. So I added a new notification into the system and I also I have a subscriber who has subscribed to the notifications. Now to notify my subscribers, I will have to have a publisher. So in my case, I have three different subscriptions. So I have event subscription, email subscription and also SMS subscription. So when people subscribe to my service, they can choose what type of subscription they want. Depending on that subscription from the subscription table, I'm going to replay or pick up that particular message and publish that into the corresponding system. So here in terms of event publisher, I have JSON messages or events to be published to my consumers into a queuing system. Also, there could be an email publisher where I want to send an email based on a text which I have pushed. The other thing is I have a SMS publisher where I want to send quick messages to my subscribers who are subscribed to SMS subscriptions. So these are different publishers which are going to be published and these publishers are going to be listening to the notify outbox table and depending on the type of notification which we received and picking up the subscriptions for the corresponding product, we can directly notify our subscribers. So this is how you can leverage transactional outbox pattern in a notification as a service system 
to create a much more reliable source where independently you can add your notifications independently you can add your subscriptions and independently we are going to publish these notifications to our subscribers this is a very simplistic architecture for the notification as a service but i hope you have understood how you can leverage the transactional outbox pattern in this kind of a use case moving on to understand the limitations of this particular pattern we might be publishing the message more than once when let's say you publish the message and then you crashed for example, let's say I have this email service where I publish my email to my client or the subscriber and then immediately my process crashed before I even persisted that message saying I published it already. Now what happens is the state is not maintained and when I restart my uh, email service again, it will go and look up the tables and then identify, okay, I have not sent any email to this particular subscriber, so let me resend it. So that's what happens. So you might end up getting duplicate messages However, let's say if you're using queuing kind of a system, then it is given that a consumer should be idempotent. So you don't have to worry about idempotency. But in terms of, let's say, email publishers or SMS publishers, then you will have to track the message ID and then you can filter out duplicate messages. So I cannot directly have my email publisher to directly publish a message. Instead, I can just use another REST API call I, or I can just filter out message IDs based on my previous email sends or message sends. The next one is these systems are near real time. They are not real time as such. So when I create a notification to the notification as a service system, you cannot get notifications instantaneously. However, it will take some time for the notification to get processed. So obviously these are called as near real time systems. A classic example is your YouTube notification. So if I upload a video in YouTube, I don't think you're going to get the notification instantaneously. It takes few seconds or minutes depending on the type of message, cues, volume etc these are some of the limitations of this particular pattern i'll just summarize what we just discussed initially we saw what is transactional outbox pattern and how you can leverage this to fix some of the issues in the saga pattern we also saw when to use this kind of a pattern i tried to explain that with a notification as a service use case where we understood how we can publish messages to different consumers based on the subscriptions and the notifications finally we discussed some of the challenges and the limitations in this particular pattern I hope this particular video was helpful. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.